Welcome. Today we're going to be breaking down an Acer Aspire 5. This particular model is the A515. So to start we're just going to need a small Phillips bit. This is a 2.5. So we'll flip the laptop over and to their credit uh, Acer has remained with the uh, memory and hard drive access doors where a lot of other laptops have gone to the you know the full sleek bottom case where you have to actually remove the whole bottom case to do any upgrades so it's kind of nice to see that they've uh, left these memory and hard drive cover doors uh, so the first thing we'll do is just remove the one screw for each door and then we'll remove the doors Alright, so I'll just go ahead and pop up on that corner that they left us and remove these cover doors. Now for the RAM stick, we're just going to spread the little retainer bars. And once that memory stick pops up, we can pull it straight out. Alright, and then for the hard drive, there are four screws holding in the hard drive caddy. So we're first going to remove those four screws. All right, and then using one of the little tabs, we're going to lift up on that hard drive and gently pull out the SATA connector. And that will release the hard drive with the caddy. And then to remove the hard drive from the caddy, there are two screws on each side. All right, so now that we have the hard drive and the memory removed, we're gonna go ahead and finish removing all of the case screws here on the bottom. All right, now we have these screws out of the bottom case. We're gonna find the seam between the uh, palm rest and the bottom case. Just kind of a little line there. And then we're gonna get a spudger or some other flat object in between the two pieces and just go along the perimeter, um, kind of unpopping it from the palm rest assembly. Once you have it started, you can pretty much just kind of just pull up and then the bottom case should just unpop. And then you'll have access to the inside. All right, so as usual, we're gonna start by removing the battery. So the battery screws have a smaller size bit. So we are going to go down to about a 1.5 Phillips bit and that will allow us to remove these smaller size battery screws. Alright, so it looks like it's just a couple screws and with this type of connector it just slides straight out so you'll get fingernail on each of the tabs on either side of the battery connector and then lift it up and out of the laptop. All right, so we've got a nice in out board here. I'm going to go ahead and remove that as well. So it looks like it's just one screw and then a pretty long ribbon. And then with this type of connector on the motherboard, you're just going to grab the little dark gray uh, kind of connector and pull it straight out. And then that will allow you to remove the ribbon. And then we'll just kind of push that back in. And we'll just finish unsticking the ribbon. that will allow us to remove that in outboard. All 
Alright, so for the Wi-Fi card, we're just going to pop straight up on those antennas. And then it's just one screw holding in the card. And just pull it laterally out of this little slot. Alright, so next up it looks like we can go ahead and remove the cooling fan and heat sink. So we'll go ahead and remove the screws for the fan. And it is held on by a little bit of tape. So we'll go ahead and just pull that connector straight out. And then that'll allow us to kind of flip that fan up to get it off of that piece of tape. And the heat sink is just held on by the four screws um, right above the processor. So we're gonna go ahead and remove those four screws. Now the screws are numbered. So if you're gonna be reinstalling this heat sink with new thermal paste, you're gonna tighten them down in the order that's stamped on the heat sink. So it'll be one, two, three, four, kind of a Z pattern. That way it tightens down um, onto that thermal paste evenly. But as far as removal, uh, the order doesn't matter. So once we have those screws out, we can remove the heat sink. All right, so it looks like we are good to remove the motherboard. So we're first gonna, of course, disconnect all of the ribbons. Um, and then release the pram battery. The pram battery is going to stay connected to the motherboard and um, the rest of the ribbons we're just going to take off. So for most of the front side connectors um, it's just a little retainer that you flip up and then you can pull that ribbon out. And for the keyboard it has two tabs that you push laterally which will release that ribbon and you can just push that back in. DC jack just comes straight out. And then it looks like the, this is the SATA connector. So for the SATA connector, it has a different kind of uh, connector on here. There's a little piece of uh, plastic ribbon on there that you just pull straight up with but at the same time you want to put a finger right next to it and hold the board down while you pull up. Some of these have pretty good resistance to kind of popping off and sometimes they can pry up on that motherboard and that's, that's not a good thing. So we'll finish removing the tape and that'll allow us to release that SATA connector for the hard drive. And it looks like one more just pull straight out type connector for uh, the speakers. And then just one more pull up connector for the video cable. It actually came off pretty easy. So doing the last check of that motherboard, it looks like we've removed all of the ribbons. So we'll go ahead and remove the screws. All right, so once you're ready to remove the motherboard, you're just gonna gently Pry up on one side and just kind of give it a little wiggle. Um, sometimes they're held on by a little bit of adhesive, so the wiggle action will help kind of free it up and it'll also give you an early warning in case you forgot a screw or two. So we'll gently flip that over, make sure we've got everything unplugged, and then we can remove the motherboard from the palm rest. Alright, so it looks like the DC jack remains um, I believe it's just held on with some adhesive so 
can just pop that DC jack up and release it uh, from the adhesive and that will allow you to remove it. All right, so I think we're ready to remove the display assembly from the palm rest. And to do that, we're first going to um, kind of unweave the Wi-Fi antenna from the palm rest. We want to get all of the cables disconnected from the palm rest assembly. So anything that's coming from that display assembly, we want to unhook. And in this case, release from the large amount of tape. Okay, so we got both the Wi-Fi antennas and the video cable coming from the display assembly. And these hinges are a slightly larger screw, so I'm switching back to the 2.5, and then we will remove the hinge screws. Once you've got the three screws from either side of the hinge, we're going to manually lift up on these hinges. And we're going to swivel them up to the almost fully open position. Like so. And then we should be able to just lift up on that palm rest, tilt it, and remove it from the display assembly. So for the palm rest, um, the, it looks like the speakers are just held on by rubber grommets. The touchpad is going to be held on by a couple Phillips head screws there at the top. Once you remove those, um, you should be able to uh, lift the touchpad assembly out of the palm rest assembly. Uh, the keyboard is non-removable. The backing plate is riveted into the palm rest. So if you need to replace your keyboard, you're gonna be replacing the palm rest assembly. So that is it for the palm rest and we will move on to the display. All right, so with most laptops, um, the display assembly is open by removing the bezel from the back cover and we're gonna do that on this model as well. So some, some of these you can get a fingernail on the inner part of the bezel and then just start slowly kind of working it around until that bezel starts popping off and then we'll just work our way around the assembly. It's definitely best to save the bottom for last. Um, a lot of models will have a strong layer of adhesive here at the bottom, um, which can make it a kind of a pain to remove. Uh, this one does not though, so this will be an easy bezel to remove. All right, so once you pop that bezel off, then you'll have access to the inside of the display. And easiest way to replace the LCD. Um, there's going to be the four screws. So we'll go ahead and remove that. Remove the screws for the LCD assembly first. All right, so once we have those removed, we're going to get a little fingernail on the little top tab of the LCD. And as we flip it over, we'll see the one connector here on the bottom. So this connector is held on by just this piece of sticky tape. So you wanna carefully uh, peel it from the top and slowly work it down over that connector. So once the tape has been unstuck from the LCD, uh, you can just pull that connector straight out. But you don't want to rush the pulling the tape off because sometimes um, if it's taped really well, you can actually just rip that connector straight out of your screen. If it's broken, not a big deal, but if you're replacing something else, it'd probably be a pretty big headache. So that's how you replace the LCD. 
All right, so it looks like we just have a few screws on each side for those hinges, so we'll go ahead and remove those now. And once you have those four screws out, you can remove the hinge and the rail. We'll go ahead and repeat for the other side. All right, so what we're left with is a back cover, a webcam with cable, and the two Wi-Fi antennas. So for the Wi-Fi antennas, they're just held on by uh, some pretty sticky adhesive, and they'll just peel off. I'm gonna leave these um, on the back cover, but you can see it's real simple to replace it. You just unstick it and then unwind it from the little channels here in the back cover. So the last thing we're gonna remove here is the uh, video cable and webcam. So we'll just remove that video cable from the little channels. And then we can just push that Wi-Fi antenna back in there. All right, so once we've kind of unwound the webcam cable, remove the webcam the easiest way to do it without damaging is to pry from the top or the bottom and just kind of work it work it up evenly just like that so the webcams held on by a long strip of, ad of adhesive here on the back so if you pry from either side, you're gonna be bending the webcam pretty extremely. Um, so that's why it's best to get it from the top of the bottom. Um, that way it just kind of flips it, flips it over and releases it from the adhesive without bending it. All right, so we're down to the plain back cover with the Wi-Fi antennas. And this computer is basically fully disassembled. Um, so, that's basically it. If this video helped you um, or you liked, please like and subscribe. And that is how you disassemble an Acer uh, A515.